They could tell a story with, with Montez and, 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 and Dawkins. If one goes for a title or something and others in the corner and, you know, and they, they could do that, but I don't know what the staying power of that is. So I think they're almost afraid to do anything at this point because, you know, sometimes if you do the wrong thing, that's worse than doing nothing. What is going on, you guys? Welcome in to the Sports Kita Wrestling Facebook page and the Wrestle Binge by Sports Kita YouTube channel. Rick Uchino, SP3, and the wrestling legend himself, Dutch Mantel, doing a special uh, news and rumor roundup here for you. The biggest topics of conversation from this week in professional wrestling, because, uh, well, we, we missed the show uh, one Friday this month. So we, we wanted to make sure we fill our quota and give you guys as much Dutch man tell as we possibly can. First things first, Dutch. How, how are you doing? The was, that, was, no. was that was that like a backhanded compliment? No, we we, we, we want to give oh. people as much Dutch man tell oh. as they want. Oh, well, that's that's better then. Uh, you had a question for me? Yeah. How are you? <laughs> well, I'm better. I'm better than I was last Friday. And I don't know what I got that put me in the hospital a couple of times. Hope it's gone forever. Uh, a weird, weird, you know, condition. And I haven't talked a lot about it, but it was like a week the first time that I was hospitalized. I don't, I don't remember the whole week. I don't remember nothing. It just, just gone. And they actually ended up. I don't. I haven't told anybody this, but they gave me a blood transfusion. And I didn't even know it. That's how far, I, that's how out I was. So I come to and they said, oh, well, you did okay doing the blood transfusion. I went, and I understood that. I said, <laughs> yeah. what the hell? Why? Well, you needed it. So I said, well, 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 thanks, well thanks for telling me. But, uh, <laughs> but I do want to thank all the wrestling fans because hospital care in the United States is a nightmare. It, it just is. And I put up a GoFundMe to help me with that. And it has actually uh, rekindled my faith in a humanity because, and I've never met these people, but they, they contributed and they donated. And I want to thank everybody who did that because unless I got that, I'd have, I'd have been in trouble. So thank you everybody. If you contributed to my GoFundMe, yeah, man, we we are glad that you are uh, you're back on your feet and here talking with us. So let's dive into some wrestling conversation. You think you know all the wrestling stories? There's more you haven't heard yet. Join us on Backstage Pass. A lot of, lots going on this week. We're going to do about four or five major topics here if there's time. But uh, I wanted to start with the fact that right now in in WWE, obviously they're building up to the Survivor Series pay per view. Uh, it excuse me, premium live event, and uh, going to be headlined by one of the big uh, matches: Bloodline versus Bloodline inside of uh, War Games, Survivor Series War Games. And right now, though, one of the main key cogs in directing this Bloodline storyline for the last several years, Michael Hayes is currently away from WWE. At the same time, so is Bruce Pritchard. Both of them, personal reasons. Now, I'm going to speculate on what those are, but they are away for due to personal reasons right now. Dutch, you've been behind the scenes in the creative department. For Triple H to lose two key figures like that, people who have been around for a long time, people who are uh, integral figures in the creative team and the process and the production of WWE TV, for them to be both gone at the same time ahead of one of your big Four big five premium live events. You know how much uh, extra strain and stress does that put on somebody like Triple H? And uh, you know at this time, well, he does have help, so, but it does put a strain on him because they have a vision for where they want. They've already started it. They have a vision, but where they want it to go. But when you get down in the nitty gritty of it, when you're working out the minute details of it. And yeah, it does have, you know, small things they do that actually can mean so much. And to lose your architect at this point is, is, is not a good thing. I think it'll still be good just by the, by the talent that's, that's in it. I think it will be good, but 
it, it, it does put a strain on Triple H. And, uh, and I don't know how much Bruce Pritchard had to do with it. I think this is more or less, and I've watched it since the beginning, it has uh, Michael Hayes' fingerprints all over it. And I don't know how much that will take away from it. And it may take away nothing, really. It may run on its own power for a while because it's a pretty hot issue right now. So uh, it's not a good thing, but it's not the worst thing that could happen. Worst thing to happen if you lose you know, two or three of your contestants, your combatants. That's probably the worst thing. But the the coach on the sideline, another coach will fill in, and 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 probably the members of this group, uh, they have an idea where it's going to go anyway, and I think they could almost put it together themselves. Well, SP three, uh, I I don't know if if again this is just me speculating, you know, because I'm I'm obviously not back there, but I I don't know if I would call Michael Hayes the head coach. I think maybe I'd call him more the offensive coordinator because I feel like the head coach for this is always going to be Paul Heyman. Um, yeah. And but anytime that there is a producer credit or anything of that nature involving the on-screen product with the bloodline. It has always been um, Michael Hayes. Since he's been out, have you noticed any kind of uh, drop in production, shall we say, with the bloodline? Um, I wouldn't say that. I think they've executed all their big angles. I, I felt like in the matchup at Crown Jewel, I didn't think it met my expectations because I always have big expectations in the tag team matches from the bloodline and they're very well put to get out put together and thought out uh between the the performers in the ring and the producers so I didn't think that that matchup really left second gear so I think that would probably be the only kind of instance where I was like maybe if Michael Hayes was there it would have been laid out a little bit better would have been a better matchup overall but other than that I think the post match at Crown Jewel worked I think all the promo work has worked especially since Sami Zayn has gotten back into play and they set it up uh very well for the time that they had. I felt like it got put together very quickly as far as Jay joining up with Jimmy and Roman after years of, you know, frustration, years of tension between them. And then Sami Zayn in a number of like two weeks, yeah. he went from being against Jay Uso, being with the bloodline to now he's joining up with Roman. And the fact that Roman never apologized and basically got everything he wanted. There's a lot of holes that they have to patch up, but that's not, Oh, Michael Hayes is not here. We don't have him because like like you guys both said, Michael Hayes is more about kind of constructing what the angle is given to him by Triple H and then executing it with the performers in the matchup if something physical in an angle like that. So I think that maybe Paul Heyman hasn't been behind the scenes as much as we probably assume he has. I know there has been reports that he was backstage at different events, but week to week, He's not there in the same fashion that he was during the heights of the bloodline. So maybe that is a bigger effect of, you know, someone being gone and affecting the product. How long has Michael been out? It's been a couple of, at least a few weeks, I think. I don't know, um, to be completely honest with you. But th this is fascinating to me. I would love the opportunity. If anybody from WWE is watching this, I would love the opportunity to be a fly on the wall of the sausage factory and see how all of this stuff is put together. I would just absolutely love to see what people, to see what Michael Hayes' role is, to see what Paul Heyman's role in all of this is, to see what role Triple H uh, plays uh, with the bloodline and how much he's had more hands on with that than maybe something else or vice versa. Uh, it would be uh, yeah, that would be very, very interesting to watch all of that um, unfold. Um, what's the, what's the deal on Pritchard? You're not going to speculate, but what do you think? They're both expected to be back. That's according to Sean Ross app of Fightful.com. They're both out for personal reasons. They are both expected back uh, in sometime in the near future. Don't know when. That's as far as I know. That's the only really concrete information uh, that we have on on either gentleman. Hope everything is okay and they'll be back soon. All right, Perfect. back to those who are on the uh, active roster right now. Um, Montez Ford has been making a, a lot of headlines lately uh, because he's been doing a lot of interviews lately, and he's been a little bit more upfront and honest than I think we've seen Montez Ford in uh, in quite some time. Montez Ford has always been one of these guys, SP3, you know this, to, to kind of toe the company line, 
He's always talking positively. This is my dream job. I love doing this. I love being out here and, you know, the military events and everything like that. He's always really, really great with the media. He's very, 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 very entertaining uh, with us. But at the same time, you can kind of tell when a talent is holding something back, holding in some particular feelings. Kind of like when Tommaso Ciampa was asked about his new entrance music and he was like, I love it. It's great. It's, it's really, really good stuff, right? Like you can tell when people are kind of, giving you some bullshit um there has been no bullshit about his feelings uh recently him talking about how he still says wwe is his dream job he's happy to have it but at the same time he seems to be growing increasingly frustrated and he's even said as much verbatim with his spot in the company and we have been talking about on this panel on hell sp3 i think we have spoken about this on four different platforms in our time doing podcasts together at this point about montez ford having all the tools just needs the opportunity he's a single star in the making we have been saying that for four to five years now he's a single star in the making and even when he's gotten his brief opportunities showing out inside the elimination chamber having the one-on-one -on -one matchup with roman reigns in the main event on smackdown they've it, those have just been little little crumbs like little carrots to dangle out in front of them like oh don't worry keep hope alive something big will come up down the line for you and they've never really gotten into that and now it kind of feels like especially with not knowing what their contract situation is with the with, with the street profits it might be a, a moment of of now or never uh with these guys wouldn't wouldn't you say at this point because angelo dawkins he ain't doing interviews but he's posting stuff on 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 social media, which also has me wondering, is this a, a a shoot that is turning into a work or is this just a straight off shoot? Uh, I, I would think that the Street Profits are more in tune with WWE than we are let out to believe. And I think that, yeah, this is probably coming from a real place. But the fact that they're putting it on the different outlets, like you said, Daily Mail. I know uh, Montez Ford did an interview for Metro as well. These are all outlets where I don't think they would be like this unless it was something the WWE wanted to do and maybe turn them heel and make them more frustrated heels, pissed off, once baby faces, but tired of doing that tired of doing things the right way and now they're going down this path because it seems like with DIY Tommaso Ciampa thinks way differently from Johnny Gargano and him getting more aggressive will eventually lead to them separating I don't think there's a lot of money in a uh, Montez Ford versus Angelo Dawkins type matchup and I think you can use their frustration as a duo for them to finally be the heels that you wanted them to be last year so I think that that is probably the direction that they're going to lean towards, regardless of if the frustration was real or not, because that is the best thing for them. They need something to freshen up their characters a bit and a heel run, a really legit heel run that they get behind and are committed to, unlike the last one. I think that's the best thing for them right now. Dutch, when you're in that situation as a talent and you have been in the same spot, and it's a great spot. It's a great gig being a WWE superstar. But it's only natural to want more than the status quo. So at, at, at what point, you know, how I, I guess, how do you go about trying to get yourself out of that position and better yourself in a spot where you're basically stuck almost? They've been stuck in this same spot for going on four years now. How to get out of it? Bitching. Just keep bitching. <laughs> And bitching and bitching and bitching. And they say, God damn, we'll give you something. If you just stay in their ear and just complain. And I, I, I do agree with, with, with Sid because I think this is with the, uh, the permission of WWE. And what they've done, they've almost held back the turn of Montez Ford so long. I think they kind of hurt him unintentionally. I think instead of you know, pulling the trigger on him and letting him go. They kept saying, nah, I don't know. I don't know, which is actually worse than not doing anything because you wear the people down just by, uh, by the time you spent doing nothing with him. I don't think they're anywhere near as, as heated up as they were say a year ago. I don't, I don't think, but they could do something with them. And, you know, I, I think you, you said, Rick, 
them against each other, I don't think would do nothing. I, I just don't. I don't think the people want to see that anyway. And to make Montez yeah. Ford a heel, I don't know if they'll buy him as a heel. They like him. They legitimately like him. And trying to turn him heel just for the sake of making him a heel, this could backfire, which I think somebody on that creative team has had these these thoughts and these these back thoughts and that let's be careful what we do and i'm i'm agreeing with that but if you're going to do something try it and now they can tell a story with with montez and 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 dawkins if one goes for a title or something and others in the corner and you know and they they could do that but i don't know what the staying power of that is so i think they're almost afraid to do anything at this point because you know sometimes if you do the wrong thing that's worse than doing nothing right so i, I think they want to leave him right where he is right now uh which is you know the time limit on that is drawing really really close so and i hope they do something these guys are good montez very, ford is very good they're 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 both really incredible i i, I still think angelo dawkins does not 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 from us because we all see it but i don't think dawkins gets the respect that he deserves from the public because i think he is you know he doesn't quite have the same athleticism or the same you know like holy shit moments inside the ring that montez does but he is very very good he is in my opinion one of the most improved in-ring performers over the last five years i think he would be just fine he's a really natural likable baby face as well just like montez is um, but I agree with you guys. I think whatever they have to do with them, and they need to do something with them, if they're going to try and turn them heel, you got to try to make it as natural as possible, or otherwise the crowd is going to push back on it. But the whole the whole Lashley thing didn't work because everybody was excited. They were like, oh my God, they're doing something with Lashley and the Street Profits. This is going to be big. Maybe this can actually push them up. You got a former WWE champion and all this stuff. And then they worked with Final Testament for six months, and then Lashley left the company. And it's just like... Start, stop, start, stop, start, stop. So what happened? So what happened in the in the in the Lashley? What happened with him, and why didn't they do something with that? Lashley's contract was was coming up, right? Yes. Yeah. So they had the match at WrestleMania, and then he got hurt overseas, and he had to have surgery, and so he was out for the summer. And then Lashley decided not to resign, or they decided not to resign him, or something along the lines of like, okay, well, let's. I'm sure it again speculative on my part. Probably something along the lines of, "Hey, we'd like to keep you. Here's our offer." And then AEW was like, "Hey, here's our offer." And oh, hey, you can go work with S- uh, SP3, MP3, uh, MVP. Excuse me, Jesus Christ, a lot of three letters here. MVP and Shelton Benjamin, and you can do the hurt business again because Triple H said no to the hurt business, and he was probably like, "All right, let's go." Yeah, that would be my guess. I could be completely wrong, but that would be my guess about what happened. And that left the Street Profits in limbo and BFAB, just to be fair to BFAB. So, um, but whatever they got to do, they got to do together because you cannot have three tag teams at the same time doing this, bickering with each other. Are they going to split? Are they not going to split? Because they're already doing that with DIY and the New Day. Three tag teams at once? Nah, this is like a company wide thing. The Judgment <laughs> Day have dissension. The oh, yeah. OG bloodline, despite having a reunion, have dissension. Like, yeah, there is there is multiple across all of these shows of people who are supposed to be groups or friends or tag teams that have dissension in them. This is just what Triple H does. Yeah. I mean, and here's the other thing. Like, I can understand the biggest thing for the Street Profits frustration because for as good as they are, for as long as they've been together, at this point... They should have some stats that rival like the Usos and the New Day and some of these other long tenured tag teams. And they just don't. They're three time tag team champions. They have won the belts each one time. And the uh, the one of those times was, oh, here, you take this one and I'll take this one. Woo, we're raw tag team champions now. No, they, they deserve a whole lot, a whole lot uh, better than that. 